Hi. Welcome. In this video, we will explain the theoretical component of what constitutes as modern portfolio theory. Modern portfolio theory, MPT, is a way of thinking about investing that helps us make smart decisions when choosing different investments. Imagine you have some money and you want to invest it to make it grow over time. MPT helps us find the best way to invest our money by considering both the expected return and the risk involved. The efficient frontier is an important idea in MPT. It's like a map that shows us the best possible options for investing our money. Think of it as a range of choices that give us the most return for a certain level of risk, or the lowest risk for a certain level of return. Let's say we have two investment options, stocks and bonds. Stocks can be riskier but have the potential for higher returns, while bonds are usually less risky but offer lower returns. The efficient frontier helps us find the right balance between these two investments. For example, if we are willing to take on more risk, we might invest more in stocks to try to get higher returns. But if we want to play it safe, we might invest more in bonds to minimize the risk. The efficient frontier shows us the best mix of stocks and bonds based on our desired level of risk and return. By using the efficient frontier, we can make better decisions about how to invest our money. We can find a balance between taking on enough risk to potentially earn higher returns and minimizing the risk to protect our investments. It helps us understand that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to investing and that the best choice depends on our individual goals and comfort with risk. So, modern portfolio theory and the concept of the efficient frontier help us make smart investment choices by considering the relationship between risk and return. It guides us in finding the optimal balance for our investments based on our personal preferences and goals. Stock returns are like the money you can make or lose when you invest in stocks. Imagine you have some money and you decide to buy shares of a company's stock. When you buy a stock, you become a part owner of that company. As the company does well and makes profits, the value of its stock may go up. This means the price of the stock increases, and if you decide to sell your shares at that higher price, you make a profit. This profit is called a positive stock return. However, there is also a chance that the company may not do well or face some problems. In such cases, the value of its stock may go down. If you decide to sell your shares at a lower price than what you paid for them, you may experience a loss. This loss is called a negative stock return. Stock returns are influenced by many factors, such as how well the company is doing, the overall state of the economy, and people's confidence in the company. It's important to remember that investing in stocks carries some risks because the value of stocks can change over time. The goal is to make informed decisions and choose stocks that have the potential to grow and generate positive returns in the long run. It's also important to note that stock returns are not guaranteed. Sometimes the value of a stock may go up and down quickly, and it can be hard to predict these changes. That's why it's important to do research, seek advice from experts, and make investment decisions based on your own goals and risk tolerance. In summary, Stock returns are the profits or losses you can make when you buy and sell shares of a company's stock. They depend on how well the company is doing and other factors. Investing in stocks carries risks, but with careful consideration and patience, it is possible to make money over time through positive stock returns. To understand how stock returns can be used to create a covariance matrix, let's imagine we have a group of friends who each have their own piggy bank. Every day, they put some money into their piggy banks, but the amount they put in can change. Some friends may put in more money on certain days, while others may put in less. Now, let's think about the relationship between the different friends' piggy banks. If they all tend to put in more money on the same days, we can say that their piggy banks move together. On the other hand, if some friends put in more money on certain days while others put in less, we can say their piggy banks move differently. In the world of investing, stocks are like these piggy banks. Stock returns are like the changes in the amount of money in the piggy banks. By looking at how these returns move together or differently, we can understand the relationship between different stocks. 
A covariance matrix is a special tool that helps us measure how stocks move together or differently. It's like a table that shows the relationships between different stocks. Each cell in the table represents the relationship between two stocks, and the number in the cell tells us how closely or differently they move together. To create a covariance matrix, we gather the historical returns of different stocks. We look at how the returns of one stock relate to the returns of all the other stocks. If two stocks tend to move together, their covariance value will be positive. If they tend to move differently, their covariance value will be negative or close to zero. By analyzing the covariance matrix, we can understand which stocks tend to move together and which ones move differently. This helps us make decisions about how to diversify our investments. Diversification means spreading our money across different stocks that have different movement patterns. By doing this, we can reduce the risk of putting all our money into stocks that move in the same way. In summary, stock returns can be used to create a covariance matrix, which shows us how different stocks move together or differently. It helps us understand the relationships between stocks and make informed decisions about diversifying our investments. Just like our group of friends and their piggy banks, the covariance matrix helps us see how stocks can move together or differently based on their historical returns. Imagine you have a bunch of toys and you want to decide how to arrange them in your toy box. You want to make sure you get the most fun out of your toys while also being careful not to have too many similar toys that might get boring. The efficient frontier is like finding the best way to arrange your toys to have the most fun and minimize the risk of getting bored. In finance, instead of toys, we have investments like stocks or bonds. The efficient frontier helps us find the best combination of investments to make the most money while also reducing the risk of losing money. We want to find the perfect balance where we get the highest possible return for a certain level of risk, or the lowest risk for a certain level of return. To figure out this perfect balance, we use some math. We have a special equation that tells us how to minimize the risk and maximize the return. It looks complicated, but let's break it down. The equation has different letters that represent different things. For example, the letter W represents the proportion or weight of each investment in our portfolio. It's like how much of each toy you put in your toy box. The symbol sigma represents a special table called the covariance matrix, which tells us how the investments move together. The letter mu represents the expected returns, which is like how much money we think we will make from each investment. The equation tells us that we want to find the best weights for our investments so that the expected return of our portfolio is as high as possible, while the risk, represented by the standard deviation dollar backslash sigma underscore p dollar, is as low as possible. It's like finding the best way to arrange our toys in the toy box so that we have the most fun and least chance of getting bored. So, the efficient frontier is like finding the perfect arrangement of investments that gives us the most return for a certain level of risk, or the least risk for a certain level of return. It helps us make smart decisions about how to invest our money and balance our desire for making money with our need to protect against losing it. Next, we will look at the code to see how this works.